Donald Trump leads Kamala Harris by just a tenth of a percentage point, 0.1%, based on 104 polls in Decision Desk HQ in the Hill's national average. Harris is led in five straight surveys leading up to today's VP selection, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. But as always, the key question remains, how are Trump and Harris polling against one another in the key battleground states that will ultimately determine who hits 270 electoral votes and thereby who secures the White House? On your screen right now is the 2024 Electoral College map, with seven states left blank here in gray. These are the only states where there have been enough polls taken between Harris and Trump for Decision Desk HQ to have created an average. The rest of the states are already filled in with my own prediction ratings. These ratings are based on a combination of factors like past results, betting markets, expert ratings, and demographic trends. And as you can see here in the electoral vote counter, former President Trump holds an initial advantage with 235 electoral votes among the states that he is favored to win. That leads Vice President Harris with 213. 90 electoral votes remain without a rating. Let's get started now with the latest averages in the Upper Rust Belt core trio of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. This trio has decided the last two presidential races, and it's likely to play kingmaker once again, as even if Trump does sweep the Sun Belt battlegrounds of Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina, where he has generally pulled better so far this cycle, if Kamala Harris can hold these three states here in the Upper Rust Belt in the Democratic column, she would hit exactly 270 electoral votes. That being said, while the vice president is generally expected to overperform Biden, relatively speaking, in these rapidly diversifying Sun Belt states, she is comparably considered weaker than Biden in the Rust Belt a factor that probably played a role in her final two choices for her running mates, both being governors of states here in the region. Now, we have already seen Harris consolidate some of the minority support that Biden had lost in the polls, especially among voters who view both Trump and Biden unfavorably. But with that said, she will probably struggle to match Biden's unusually strong backing from older, working-class white voters, which is key here in the Rust Belt states. Let's start in Pennsylvania now, the Keystone State in both name and practice. Its 19 electoral votes are the largest prize among the key swing states. Ask any forecaster out there to name the most important states on the 2024 map. Most would say Pennsylvania. That is a big reason why Governor Josh Shapiro was considered the favorite to be Harris's VP. Nevertheless, she chose Waltz, and as per the latest polling average, Donald Trump does lead Kamala Harris by exactly one percentage point in Pennsylvania, based on 17 polls, 48% to 47%. It has tightened with the latest poll from Trump-aligned pollster Fabrizio Lee showing them tied at 48 apiece, and two of the previous three surveys did show Harris ahead. But for now, we're going to place Pennsylvania down as tilting towards Trump here on our map. And then over in Michigan, 15 electoral votes, another relatively large chunk of change here. It's voted to the left of both Pennsylvania and Wisconsin over the last few cycles. While Trump carried it by only 0.2% in 2016, he won Wisconsin and Pennsylvania both by 0.7%. And then in 2020, when Biden flipped the trio back into the Democratic column, he won Michigan by almost 3 points, 2.8%, Pennsylvania by 1.2%, and then Wisconsin by only 0.6%. Now, Democrats have also overperformed here since 2020 in down-ballot statewide contests as well, most notably Governor Gretchen Whitmer's 11-point re-election in 2022. Now, here in 2024, the polls show Harris leading Trump by 1.2%, based on eight polls, with 47.9% to 46.7%. And again, the latest survey, this time via Public Opinion Strategies, has the two candidates tied here at 45% each. Back over on our electoral map, Michigan will also go down as a tilt state, but this time toward the vice president. 
Finally, the state of Wisconsin is generally considered the most Republican-friendly of the three states here, both fundamentally and demographically. It is whiter, more religious, and has a lower share of college-educated voters than both Michigan and Pennsylvania. The latest polling average via DDHQ, though, has Harris up 0.7%, based on nine polls, 48.6% to 47.9%. This is in line with the previous two results here in Wisconsin in presidential cycles. Remember, it's the only state that was decided by less than a point in both 2016 and 2020. Ultimately, back on our map, Wisconsin joins Michigan in the tilt blue column, although I would caution against making any strong conclusions based on these ratings, as the poll average margins in all three states are effectively toss-ups at this point. Now before we head over to the Sunbelt battlegrounds, let's take a pit stop in the Commonwealth of Virginia, a reliably Democratic-leaning state over the last decade or so. Biden won it by 10 points in 2020, after Hillary Clinton had carried Virginia by 5% in 2016. Now polls this cycle have shown a more competitive race than expected. Trump even led Biden in several surveys before he dropped out. But now with Harris in the race, she does lead Trump by 2.6% based on an average of five polls. 44.9% to 42.3%. It's a smaller sample size than in the other states here, but for now, Virginia will also go down as tilting blue on our map. To the Sun Belt we go now, starting in Georgia, the closest state in the 2020 election, at Biden plus 0.2. A once reliable Republican state, Biden was the first Democrat to carry Georgia since Bill Clinton in 1992, as this Atlanta metro region has rapidly diversified and a turnout boom among black voters pushed Democrats over the top. As I had mentioned previously, the polls here in 2024 did show Biden losing ground among black voters against Trump. And the hope for Democrats, of course, now is that Harris can stop some of that bleeding and thereby keep Georgia competitive. The latest average via DDHQ is Trump leading Harris by 3.1%, based on 11 polls, 48% to 44.9%. The latest poll from public policy polling did have Harris leading by a point, though that's the only one of the 11 in total that does not have Trump ahead. So going back to our map now, Georgia will lean towards Trump, as a margin of 3.1% is just above the threshold separating lean from tilt. Now that lifts the former president up to 270 electoral votes on the dots, with Arizona and Nevada remaining in the southwest. Before I do get there though, please take a second to consider subscribing to my channel down below. It's completely free and it does help me out tremendously. According to my channel analytics page, nearly 90% of my viewers are not currently subscribed. Let's try to get that down as close to 50-50 by election day as possible. Thank you. Alrighty, in Arizona now, Biden's second closest margin of victory in 2020 at 0.3%. He did become the first Democrat to carry Maricopa County here encompassing the Phoenix metro area in over 70 years. Maricopa always holds the key to winning elections in Arizona, and similar to Atlanta in Georgia, it has trended to the left over the last decade due to rapid population growth and diversification. Now, Trump had been consistently polling ahead of Biden here in 2024, and that continues against Harris here. The average is Trump plus 3.4, based on nine polls, 49.3% to 45.9%. That is another lean Republican rating here on our electoral map, so 11 more electoral votes are added to Trump's column. And finally, Nevada. There have been numerous positive indicators for Republicans here over the last few cycles, even as Democrats have dominated statewide elections over the last two decades. The Silver State has shifted five points in favor of Republicans relative to the nation since 2012, and does rank 44th out of the 50 U.S. states in terms of the proportion of residents with a college degree. That's the lowest of any state that Biden won in 2020 and is made all the more significant as the educational divide in partisan politics is growing deeper and deeper. Now, even more recently, in 2022, the GOP also won a closely contested race for governor in 2022, flipping it from blue to red, and received more U.S. House votes across Nevada's four congressional districts in those midterms for the first time in decades. The latest average via DDHQ in the Hill is Trump leading by 2.5%, based on six polls thus far. Trump is averaging 46.8% across these six surveys, 
compared to Harris's 44.3%. Now, the individual poll margins down here themselves have ranged from Harris plus 2 all the way up to Trump plus 10. And so for one final time, let's head back to the map and place Nevada in the tilt GOP category. So that does it for this video. Donald Trump is projected to win the 2024 presidential race with 287 electoral votes over Kamala Harris's 251 here based on the latest polling averages in key battleground states. Feel free to let me know, as always, in the comments below what you think of this map and these electoral race ratings. Shout out to my channel members on screen here. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Again, make sure to subscribe to my channel down below as well, and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.